A few weeks ago, I uploaded a video about a Voodoo 3 that had no VGA output. I would not have imagined that within 3 weeks, there will be 4 videos on my channel about the Voodoo 3. I really like to tinker with this card. In my collection are 3 Voodoo 3s so far. 2 Voodoo 3 2000 PCI and 1 Voodoo 3 3000 AGP. Today, we are going to see if we can elevate the Voodoo 3 2000 to the performance level of a Voodoo 3 3000. And we will determine the lowest temperature level the card can operate at and have a look at the temperature. But before we start, I want to quickly go through a few benchmarks. By default, the Voodoo 3 2000 uses 2.6V for the GPU core. In my last video, I attached a mod to the card that allows us to reduce the voltage of the core until we saw artifacts on the screen. With the mod attached, the voltage drops to 2.47V when the variable resistor is at its highest value of around 1.2kΩ. The lowest voltage we could set before seeing artifacts was around 2V. In the end, I settled on 2.1V to provide a bit of safety margin. The results of the benchmark will also be helpful to compare how much extra performance we can get from an overclocked Voodoo 3 2000 once I'm done replacing the heatsink. The tests I have chosen are 3D Mark 2000, 3D Mark 2001 and the Unreal Castle Flyby benchmark, which you have seen in the background so far. Unsurprisingly, the card performs exactly the same at any voltage. Be it the stock voltage of 2.6V, the maximum voltage with a mod attached of 2.47V or the minimum voltage plus the safety margin before we see artifacts on the screen at 2.1V. Reducing the voltage has a pleasant side effect. Lower temperatures. Here is a graph where you can see the original card with temperatures of almost 100 degrees on the voltage regulator. With a few optimizations, we could get the temperature down to around 77 degrees. The temperature of the graphics chip was also reduced from almost 70 degrees to 60 degrees. Until now, the core and the memory was clocked at 143 MHz, the standard frequency of a Voodoo 3 2000. Now let's see what will happen when we overclock the card to the levels of a Voodoo 3 3000. That is 166 MHz on the core and memory. Instead of flashing the card with a Voodoo 3 3000 BIOS, I decided to use the official overclocking tool released by 3DFX, which adds a new overclocking tab under the advanced graphic settings. A simple slider allows us to modify the frequency of core and memory. I have set the voltage to the highest possible value since I don't know yet how well this chip overclocks. Finding the lowest voltage will be the next step. While we gaze at the castle flyby, I record the temperature of the Voodoo card. The core and regulator are increasing in temperature, far beyond the lower clocked settings of a Voodoo 3 2000. The heat generated by the graphics chip overtakes the stock card, even though we run at a lower voltage of 2.47V. The stock card would operate at 2.6V. A passively cooled Voodoo 3 2000 overclocked to the level of a Voodoo 3 3000 suddenly seems to be a very bad idea. At this point, I stopped this experiment. Without a heatsink change or an active cooler, this card won't run at Voodoo 3 3000 levels for long. Even though the Unreal benchmark finishes with a score of 10 frames higher than the lower clocked model, the extra heat and a possible early death of the card is not worth it. Let's see if we can reduce the temperature by decreasing the voltage. This card can do 143 MHz at a voltage of 2.1V. Artifacts are showing up closer to 2V, but 21 was the value I settled at. Like before, I'm using the Unreal Tournament intro scene while reducing the voltage. Oh, are there already artifacts? I haven't even moved the voltage by more than 50 millivolts. This card artifacts almost immediately after I started to reduce the voltage. That is very unfortunate. I had hoped for something like 2.3 volts or even a bit lower. Bummer. This card can't do Voodoo 3 3000 without upgrading the cooling solution. Ok, let's create a bit more confetti and lower the voltage to a point where the card crashes. And here is the end of the road. At 2.33V, the system freezes. A hard lockup, with no possibility to recover. That was… disappointing. I guess it would be great to compare this overclocked Voodoo 3 2000 to a real Voodoo 3 3000. This time, an AGP version. But before we get into the tests, let's do some measurements. Let's first see the resistance between the ground and the adjust pin of the voltage regulator. On the Voodoo 3 2000, we had a resistance of 128 ohms. I would expect the resistance to be higher on the Voodoo 3 3000, because based on this table, the Voodoo 3 3000 operates at a higher voltage. 
and a higher resistance translates to a higher voltage in this circuit. And the Voodoo 33000 has a resistance of 138 ohms. As expected, higher compared to the Voodoo 32000. I looked at the SMDs surrounding the voltage regulator, which is identical on both cards. While probing around with a multimeter, I stumbled over this resistor. On the Voodoo 32000, this resistor reads 1, 2, A, which is a 130 ohm resistor. Close enough to the 128 ohms we measured with a multimeter on that card. Let's look for this resistor on the Voodoo 3 3000. And look at that, here we have the resistor with the number 1400. This is a 140 ohm resistor and is close to the measured 138 ohms. Once we're done with all the mods on those cards, I think the cleanest solution is to replace the surface mounted resistor, which was actually a suggestion one of you posted in the comments. The card will look unmodified and it will work at the best efficiency level. However, it will be impossible to do any kind of overclocking on those cards due to the lack of enough voltage. The temperature, however, will be great. Before I attach the mod, let's see at what voltage this Voodoo 3 3000 works at. The Voodoo 3 2000 runs by default at a voltage of 2.6 volts. And this card has a default voltage of 2.71 volts at the core. If we look at the table of voltages, we can see that it is, like it was with the Voodoo 3 2000, within the specified values. Now we can go ahead and attach the mod to the card, that allows us to change the voltage of the regulator while the system is running. It is exactly the same process as with the Voodoo 3 2000 PCI. With the mod attached and the variable resistor at its highest value, the Voodoo 3 2000 had a resistance of 116 ohms. The Voodoo 3 3000 has a resistance of 124 ohms. I wonder how low we can set the voltage before we see artifacts or a system crash. The card is at its default frequency of 166 MHz and we start with a voltage of 2.56 volts, the maximum I can set with the mod attached. As a reminder, the voltage without the mod was at 2.71 volts. So we already have reduced the voltage just by attaching the mod. I slowly reduce the voltage until we see artifacts on the screen or the system crashes. If it is anything like the Voodoo 3 2000, we should see artifacts long before the card is crashing. Okay, I see artifacts. The card starts artifacting at around 2.25 volts. Once I go back over 2.3 volts, the picture looks clear. This isn't too bad considering that the overclocked Voodoo 3 2000 started artifacting at 2.43 volts. The chip of the Voodoo 3 3000 must be of better quality compared to the Voodoo 3 2000. The final voltage I will settle for this Voodoo 3 is 2.35 volts. This is only 0.35 volts lower compared to the default voltage, but we are also at higher frequencies compared to the Voodoo 3 2000. If we want to achieve a final voltage of 2.35 volts for the Voodoo 3 3000, then I have to get a 100 ohm resistor as a replacement of the current 140 ohm resistor. The variable resistor in this case was at around 360 ohms. Let's do a final test. Let's downclock the Voodoo 3 3000 to levels of a Voodoo 3 2000 and see how low the voltage can be set. It looks like the chip of the Voodoo 3 3000 is of better quality compared to the Voodoo 3 2000. Maybe we can reach a voltage quite a bit lower than 2 volts. We start again at 2.56 volts, but this time with a frequency of 143 MHz. I will lower the voltage until we see artifacts on the screen. And we are close to 2.1 volts, the value I think works well with my Voodoo 3 2000. Oh, the system crashed. There weren't even artifacts on the screen yet. This behavior is totally different from the other Voodoo card. Maybe it's not the chip, but something else that causes the crash. Very interesting. This chip cannot go as low in terms of voltage as the Voodoo 3 2000 chip. However, on higher frequencies, this chip performs much better. In any case, both Voodoo cards would benefit from a reduction in voltage. The voltage of the Voodoo 3 2000 can be reduced by 0.5 volts, while the voltage of the Voodoo 3 3000 can be reduced by 0.35 volts, which brings the final voltage of both cards to 2.1 and 2.35 volts respectively. Now, if you wonder why I haven't done any thermal recordings, then let me introduce you to the invisible heatsink. The aluminum heatsink is not picked up by the thermal camera. Aluminum, glass and shiny surfaces exhibit this behavior. Once I place a tissue over the heatsink, I can make it visible. Obviously, the readings are not accurate using this method. 
Therefore, I'm sorry for not having a lot of thermal video clips this time. But if you're interested in the Infuray P2 Pro thermal camera, which I'm using for the thermal imaging in my videos, check out the links in the video description. There is also a code that gives you 10% off when you order from pergear.com. And this is the end of today's video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed today's content and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss whenever I upload new videos. A sincere thank you to all my incredible Patreons for your invaluable support. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.